In this review tape, we're going to be going over our work on functions. In the first example, I'm going to give you several functions, and I want in each of them for you to determine the domain. Determine the domain of each of the following functions. Okay, the first part, the function f defined by the equation f of x is equal to x minus 3 over x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, now, sometimes in a function you have a domain explicitly given to you. It may say this function is only defined for all x values between 3 and 8, and then that's the domain of the function. Other times, you have to determine the domain of the function. If it's not explicitly stated, basically, the, func the domain of the function is going to be the set of all those x values that you could substitute into the function and have it make sense. Now, what do we mean by making sense? We don't want any division by 0 and no square roots of negative numbers, no square or even roots of negative numbers. Okay. Bearing that in mind, we take the approach of what would mess this function up, division by zero. So what do we have to look out for? We have to watch out if the denominator is equal to zero. And we see we have, we set this uh, denominator equal to zero, we get a quadratic equation, which can be solved by factoring. We have x plus three times x minus two equals zero. So gives us two solutions, x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x equals 2, x equals minus 3. These are the bad values, the ones that cause division by 0. So we must exclude these values. Okay, so the domain of this function f, which can be written in this form, domain and the name of the function, which is f, would be the set of all x values, okay, except x should not be equal to minus 3 or 2. All x values, x not equal to minus 3 or 2, in other words, those are the ones to be excluded. All other x values can be substituted in and have this thing make sense, in that you would not have any division by 0 and no square roots of negative numbers. Obviously, there's no square roots to worry about here. But there is a denominator, and we'd be in trouble if the denominator were equal to 0. So we take the approach, set the denominator equal to 0, and find those values to be excluded from the domain. OK, in our next example, g of x. The next part of this example, we have the function g of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 3. Okay, well here we don't have any denominator to worry about division by 0, but we do have a square root. And we know we'd be in trouble if it would be the square root of a negative number. So we must exclude all those x values for which 2x plus 3 would be less than 0. Or you could take the other approach and say, I'm going to include all those values for which 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. There is nothing wrong with the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is 0. OK, you'd be in trouble if you have a negative number. But if you're 0 or positive, you can take the square root. OK, well, solving this inequality, we get 2x is less than minus 3 x less than minus 3 halves is to be excluded, or the alternate approach, 2x greater than or equal to minus 3, x greater than or equal to minus 3 halves is to be included, giving us the domain of g. All x such that x is greater than or equal to minus 3 halves. Or knowing that you've excluded the values less than minus 3 halves, the values to be included in the domain are minus 3 halves and over to the right, greater than or equal to minus 3 halves. And 
finally in part C here, we have the following. H of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 5. Here we have both problems to worry about. We have a square root. We also have a fraction. Okay. So we know that we have to include only those values for which we have uh, we have to exclude those values to which there is division by 0. So x minus 5 is not to be equal to 0. x is not to be equal to 5. We should also exclude those values, which would give us the square root of a negative number. x less than 2 is to be excluded. So we're going to include x greater than or equal to 2 x greater than or equal to 2 is to be included. Domain of h, all x values that you can substitute into this function to have it make sense, meaning no division by 0 and no square roots of negative numbers, we have to throw out 5 and all those values less than 2. So the domain is all values greater than or equal to 2, but not 5. In our next example, we are given a function, which is uh, by means of, uh, of seeing its graph. We're not given an equation which defines the function, but we're given a picture of the function. And we're asked for the domain and the range of this function. Let's say that this is the function f, and we are interested in the domain and the range of this function. Okay, all the domain is a set of all x values, okay, for which the function makes sense, that is, for which uh, y values have been provided. Okay, so we look to see where the function is, and we see the x values covered by this function. What, one thing you can do is sort of like drop a per perpendicular from every point onto the x-axis, every point on the function, and the x values that are covered would be the domain of the function. Those are the x values for which y values are provided. Okay, so the domain goes from minus 5 until 4. Which x values are provided by this function, are specified by this function? All x values from minus 5. In other words, at minus 5, we're told the y value that goes with it is 2. For example, at minus 4, it looks like it's about 1 and a half, and so on. But the x values start at minus 5, they're specified, and they're specified up to 4 and including 4. After 4, the function abruptly stops. There's nothing wrong with that. You just simply write that the domain are all x values between minus 5 and 4. Now, the range is a set of y values that you get out when you substitute in these x values. So we look to see which y values are covered by the function. And there are no y values here. The smallest y value that we see, there's a point on the curve for, is y equals minus 3. And going on up, the highest y value covered, this goes up to 1, but over here, this goes up to 2. We see the y values are running from minus 3 to 2. So we write down for the range all y values between minus 3 and 2. Okay, now what I'm going to do is draw some curves on the board for you. And we're going to try to figure out whether or not these uh, are pictures of functions of x. Oh, these are graphs of functions. Okay, so let's say here's A, B, C, and D. I'll give you four of them. And I'll label the axes. We want to know which are graphs of functions. All right. First, I'm going to give you a straight line like that, and a parabola, 
with vertex at the origin, then an S-shaped curve like so, and finally, or maybe the bottom half of the circle. Okay, now we don't have equations here, but we have a way of determining whether or not we have the graph of a function of x. We have something called the vertical line test. You know that uh, if you have, a, you have a function of x, if for every x there is one and only one y value assigned to it. Okay, now picking an x value in a sense is like picking a vertical line. For example, if I say uh, if at x let x equal 1, x equals 1 is a vertical line. If, when I pick x equals 1, I draw the vertical line, wherever this vertical line crosses the function, in this case right around here, that is the y value assigned by that function to this particular x value. Now what the vertical line test tells us is that if every vertical line drawn in the domain of the function crosses the graph of the function exactly once, then we have the graph of a function. Okay, if we have a graph, we're not sure if it's a function. We draw vertical lines throughout the domain. If the vertical, each vertical line crosses the graph exactly once, then it is the graph of the function. Because picking a vertical line is like picking an x value. If it crosses it once, that means for that x, there is one and only one y value, and that would make it a function. And we can see that this certainly would qualify. Every x value drawn through the domain here, okay, cuts the curve exactly once, so we have here a function. Okay, this is a function. In B, also, vertical lines cut the graph exactly once, so it's also a function. In C, however, vertical line here it crosses the graph twice, so it is not a function. It doesn't matter that over here you might be able to draw a vertical line that crosses it exactly once. Once there is one vertical line that crosses it twice, it's not a function. Not a function. And finally, here, Every vertical line drawn through the domain cuts it exactly once. Don't be upset and say, well, over here it doesn't cut it at all. It just means the vertical lines at, during, through the domain, okay? This is outside of the domain, so it doesn't matter. But as long as no vertical line in the domain cuts it more than once, you're all right. Okay, if it cuts it exactly once, okay, this is a function. So only C was a, not the graph of a function. I want you to compute, uh, evaluate a function at various points. Given that f of x, the function f is defined to be 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, we want you to evaluate the following. a, f of minus 3, b, f of 5x, c, f of x squared, d, f squared of 3, e, f of x plus 2. Okay, so given that this is the function, we want you to find each of the following. Okay, it's helpful to figure out what is going on here with this function. What exactly does this function do? This function has one job. You give it a number. It squares it, doubles it, subtracts three times the number and adds four. It always does the same thing. The x is, in a sense, a dummy variable, just a placeholder. In fact, you could rewrite the function in the following form, okay, so that it would be ready to receive whatever you might feed in. 
f of something is 2 times that something squared minus 3 times the something plus 4. Because any time I see an x, I'm just writing parentheses. We are now set up to evaluate anything that you want. For example, if you want f of minus 3, then you feed minus 3 into the function in the following way, and you get 2 times minus 3 squared minus 3 times minus 3 plus 4. Every place you see an x, you substitute in the minus 3. Giving us, now remember our order of operations, Remind, you don't go 2 times minus 3, so you go minus 3 squared is 9, times 2, that's 18. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9, plus 4. So we get 18 plus 9, 27 plus 4, 31. As the answer for f of minus 3. Now, f of 5x. Okay, f of 5x would be 2 times 5x squared minus 3 times 5x plus 4. Okay, 2 times 5x squared minus 3 times 5x plus 4. 5x quantity squared is going to be 25x squared times 2, that's 50x squared minus 15x plus 4. Okay, reminding ourselves f of something is 2 times that something squared minus 3 times that something plus 4. f of x squared would be 2 times x squared squared minus 3 times x squared plus 4. x squared squared, that's x to the fourth, 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4. Okay. Now, f squared of 3. Okay. f of x squared meant you were feeding x squared into the function f squared of 3 means something else. This is defined to be f of 3 quantity squared. Okay, you can, when you see a uh, power, an exponent right after the name of the function, it means take the function at this point and raise it to that power, the whole thing to that power. It's f of 3 squared. Okay, so let's figure out what f of 3 is f of 3 is, of course, 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 4. And then that whole thing is to be squared. 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 4. Now let's see what we have. 3 squared, that's 9. 2 times 9, that's 18. Minus 9 plus 4 squared. 18 minus 9, 9 plus 4, that's 13 squared, or 169 as a final answer. Okay, now, here we have f of x plus 2. Don't let that bother you. Just remember that f of anything is 2 times that something squared minus 3 times that something plus 4. And it doesn't matter whether or not uh, you're plugging in a number or a variable or what have you. f of anything is that. So f of x plus 2 will be 2 times 
x plus 2 squared minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 4. which gives us 2 times, now x plus 2 squared is x plus 2 times x plus 2, which will be x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 4. 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. It's not just x squared plus 4. Don't forget, you multiply x plus 2 times itself minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 4. Let us now distribute the 2 through the parentheses here. 2x squared plus 8x plus 8. Now here distribute the minus 3. Minus 3x minus 6 plus 4 and collect the like terms. We have 2x squared. 8x minus 3x is plus 5x. 8 minus 6, 2 plus 4, 6. So we have 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, let's add in another part to this problem. We found f of x plus 2. I want to find f of x plus 2 minus f of x all over 2. Okay? No particular reason to do this at this point. I'm just asking you to do this calculation. Calculations like this sometimes are used in calculus courses, if you ever get that far. Right now, we're just doing this for its own sake. Okay. Well, we've already computed f of x plus 2. We have it right there. It's 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. Take away f of x all over 2. Now, f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 was the function as originally given to us. Let's just go back over there and see. It's f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. We went through a lot of calculations. We figured out that f of x plus 2 is equal to this. Okay, this came from the original function. Okay, let's subtract. We have 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. Distribute, in a sense, a minus 1 here. Minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 over 2. Let's see. Collecting the like terms on top, the 2x squared and the minus 2x squared cancel out. We have 5x plus 3x, which is 8x, plus 6 minus 4 is plus 2 over 2. And we see that 2 is a factor on top. You just can't cancel the 2s like that, of course. You can only cancel factors, not terms. We can factor a 2 out on top, leaving us with 4x plus 1. And dividing it by 2, the 2s do cancel, and we get a final answer of 4x plus 1. Okay, in the next example, number five, given that f of x is equal to x squared plus x, I want you to find f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, this is similar to the last part of the preceding problem, except there we wanted to find f of x plus 2 minus f of x over 2. And here we're working with h, which is just some unknown. Don't let that bother you. Uh, the function, of course, has changed. It's now x squared plus x. Okay, the first thing to realize, of course, is that this function has one job. You give it a number, and it squares the number and adds the original number to it. That's all it does. So if we would like to find f of x plus h, see, even though the problem was given to us all in one, there's nothing that says we can't break it up into smaller parts. Let's work with f of x plus h first, which is similar to what we did in the last problem. 
f of x plus h would be, of course, x plus h squared plus x plus h, which is, now this is x plus h times x plus h to be squared by FOIL, x squared plus hx plus hx plus 2hx plus h squared plus x plus h. Okay, now, we would like to compute f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Let's see what we have. f of x plus h we have just found. It is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus x plus h. And from this, we would like to subtract f of x as a originally given and then divide by h. Okay? f of x plus h we calculated is this. f of x plus h, we write that, minus f of x, which is the original function, x squared plus x, all over h. So the h, we just write like that. For f of x, we take the function from here as originally given. For f of x plus h, we take what we've just worked out. All right, let's see if we can simplify when we perform the subtraction. We have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus x plus h, distributing the minus 1, minus x squared minus x all over h. We assume, of course, here that h is not 0. We're not dividing by 0. The x squareds cancel. The plus x and the minus x cancel. So what do we have up on top? We have 2hx plus h squared plus h all over h, which is very similar to where we were over here. Okay, here we have a 2 downstairs, which can cancel a factor of 2 upstairs. We factored out a 2, cancel the 2s. The same thing here, except what we have over here is now an h upstairs as a factor. Okay, so over here, whereas before 2 was a factor, now upstairs we notice that h is a factor. Factoring out an h leaves us with 2x plus h plus 1 over h. So 2hx plus h squared plus h. Now, just like the 2's canceled, now the h is canceled, leaving us with a final answer of 2x plus h plus 1. This will bring us to the end of the tape.